of Numbers chapter number 13 or we'll read from verse 25. Numbers 13 from verse 25. And they returned from searching the land after 40 days and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of uh, the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to, Gad to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told him and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are old and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak them. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountain and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Hallelujah. And but the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we want to continue from where we left on this series, Fulfilling Your Purpose. And uh, I am so happy that uh, today's service will truly equip you enough to accomplish your God purpose here on earth. Get ready for that. 
you are going to fulfill your purpose. You are going to realize the purpose for which God brought you here on earth and you are going to engage the necessary tools for your purpose to answer. And I'm going to hand over to you one of the equipment that you are going to use in order to realize your God-given purpose and to fulfill it. On Wednesday, we analyzed what made Caleb to fulfill his purpose. And I remember telling you that it is important for us to study those that have made it and also study those that have failed so that we can learn from those that have made it, apply the same thing that they have applied and get the results that they got. And also the reason why we study those who have not made it, it is so that we can learn why they failed, what they applied in their life that made them to fail. And then we can avoid applying the same thing in our life so that we can make it. And I remember the Wednesday service, it was so great. We were dealing with um, a winning mindset that we saw in Caleb that made him to accomplish his God-given purpose and to win in life. But today we are going to study these other 12, uh, these other 10 spies who were with Caleb and they failed to accomplish that which God wanted them to accomplish. What made them to fail? And from there, if there is anything that they manifested which is in your life, which made them to fail, we are going to remove it. We are going to deal with it so that uh, you can be counted among victors. Hallelujah. How many of you like to succeed in life? You like to you like to make it. Praise the name of the Lord. What made the 12 the 10 spies to fail was their mindset. Caleb had a winning mindset. And the ten colleagues to Caleb had a losing mindset. And in this passage where we read, we see them saying, we cannot be able to take the land because the land is already occupied. 
they talked about the land which God has given them and they said we are not able to take the land because the land is already taken hallelujah the land is already taken and they began to describe the giants which they saw in the land they talked of the giants who occupied the mountain top they talked of the giants who were by the valley they talked of the giants who were by the seaside and the whole land which they were promised by God seemed to have been taken. And they said, when we looked at those that have taken the land, we were like grasshoppers in their sight and in our own sight. So today we are going to deal with what I call the grasshopper mentality. That is the mentality that they had. That is the mentality that made them fail to take what God has given to them. They had a grasshopper mentality. They looked down upon themselves. They thought that they were not good enough. They thought that they were they were nothing as compared to the opposition. And if you don't take care of that kind of mentality, you may end up not taking what God has given to you. But uh, I know that as many of you as have been allowed by the Holy Spirit to be in this service, all of you are going to get rid of this mentality, the grasshopper mentality. And you are surely going to fulfill your purpose. Hallelujah. We will knock down the grasshopper mentality today. And you are going to possess the land. Hallelujah. The language that you were using when you were coming, the words that you were using when you were coming, as you were driving with your husband or with your, with your uh, loved ones, is going to be totally different from the language that you are going to be using when you are going back home. How you saw yourself as you were coming, is going to be totally different from how you will see yourself from this service and how you are going to continue to see yourself going forward. Hallelujah. Dealing with the grasshopper mentality. Now, this mentality didn't just fall from heaven on them. There are some events that took place in their lives that made them to come up with this kind of a mentality. They had a history. They went through a lot which made them come up with such kind of a mentality. It, it, it was not an impartation in a service like this whereby somebody just said take it and you say I receive and from there you have that kind of mentality they came up with such kind of a mentality because of what they went through remember these people were in the land of captivity and according to history, they stayed there for 430 years, which means 
their grand, 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 grandfather, like four generations before them lived in captivity. They lived in Egypt, a land of captivity, a land where they were not celebrated, a land where they were used like tools, a land where they were abused by the taskmasters, a land where they grew to know slavery and bad words spoken on their lives by those who were their masters. You know, a slave is not treated like a human being. A slave is treated like a property. Is treated like a gadget that you can use or abuse. So they never had any good weight all their life when they were in Egypt. They had every negative word coming their way. Good for nothing. Foolish Israelite. Slave. Only the bad things were said of them in Egypt. And as these words were spoken over and over in their lives, they ended up believing what their masters said about them. And that belief formed a mentality. It formed a mentality. Even if they were beautiful, they never had anybody commenting them of the beauty that they have. Even if they were so skilled, they are the ones who built the pyramids you saw in, in history, in Egypt. But nobody ever complimented them for the good that they have done. And that crushed their spirit. That made them to look down upon themselves. And when the time for them to get out of Egypt to the promised land, to own their land, Yes, they got out of Egypt. But it seems like Egypt didn't get out of their mind. They got out of Egypt. But Egypt never got out of their mind. As slaves, they were given everything. If they want food, they got food from the taskmasters. Everything was like done for them. They were not allowed to, they didn't have the opportunity to solve some problems that pertains to their life. Food was given to them. The small land that they occupied was given to them. So, that reduced them to depend on their taskmasters for everything 
This is the reason why even when the day of their deliverance has come and they got out of Egypt, when they faced any problem, they thought of Egypt. Are you getting this? They depended on Egypt for food. So when God was giving them manna in the, in the wilderness, and it was manna and manna and manna every day, they said to Moses, Why have you removed us from Egypt? We remember the food that we ate in Egypt. The garlic, the onions, eh? the meat that we ate in Egypt. And you have taken us out. You are saying you are, you are taking us to our promised land. But here we are. We are tired of manna. So every time they faced a problem, they thought of Egypt. Because what got out of Egypt was their bodies, but their mind was still tied to Egypt. And you can never make any progress if your mind is still attached to the past. Total deliverance is the deliverance of the mind. Total deliverance is the deliverance of the mind. And that's what we are going to do here today. You are going to be delivered. You are going to fulfill your purpose. You are going to see the goodness of the Lord in the days of the living. Hallelujah. So every time they saw any challenge, every time they met any challenge, they thought of Egypt. When they were before the Red Sea, and it was like they cannot make it through. They cried unto Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt? Did you bring us out of Egypt so that we can come and perish here? So their mind was still in Egypt. Even though their bodies were out. But their mind was still in Egypt. And because of that, they failed to make it to the promised land. Because you cannot go to new levels with an old mindset. New levels need new thoughts. New levels need a new mindset. If you are still tied on your old mindset, there is no hope for you. You cannot make it a step further. Hallelujah. Today we are going to destroy the old so that we can allow space for the new. <laughs> I say we are going to destroy the old so that we can allow space for the new in your heart. And once you have the new mindset in your spirit, you will be able to realize new things in your life. Even Jesus Christ said, you cannot pour new wine on old wineskins, lest they burst. So nasi mundi tender and we are never greater. Nezwe se zwe kupvisa zwe Are you getting what I'm saying? If a papa and a ton lord does me very serious, so kuti matimone anga zivu kuti tato na se ichi chaku itika pano. Praise the name of the Lord, because I have to see something new in your life. I have to see something new in your life. Ah, I have to see something new in your life. 
something beautiful something great something awesome has to be seen in your life this time around hallelujah praise the name of the lord high five your neighbor say you will see something new it's going to happen here it's going to happen in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah how many of you are excited to see something new I can promise you, I can promise you, this service, not any other, thank God for the services that are going to come, but this service, it is designed to totally destroy the past so that you can get hold of the future. Including you who is not saying amen, as long as you are listening, You'll be surprised you are able to think of something new. Huh? And from this service, you'll buy yourself something new. <laughs> Don't say, and in Amari, who talked of money? I said you'll buy something new. Which means, if I say you'll buy something new, I mean that you'll have the money to buy that new thing. <laughs> you are going to change everything. Hallelujah. Including the old clothes that are still in your wardrobe. You are going to remove them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that you can allow new things to come in your life. Including new clothes in your wardrobe. Including new cars in your garage. Are you getting what I'm saying? Including new levels of financial prosperity in your bank account. Are you with me here? Including a new baby. Some of you are going to conceive. And you'll bring forth a new baby. <laughs> Including a, a, a new relationship. Which is going to, to work. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying in this place? There is something new that is prepared for you. And is going to come your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say heaven has organized something new for you. And as we get rid of the old mindset and we allow the new mindset in your heart, you begin to see the manifestation of the new. Praise the name of the Lord. I five your neighbor and tell them I'm ready for the new things that God is about to do. Hallelujah. Take your seat. Let's see this thing. Let's see this thing. <laughs> Some of you, you came here having been harassed by your husband. But when you go back, you'll find a new husband. It will be a new marriage. I say it will be a new marriage. Zwa wange uchi tuwa papa ya mchiri mko manane msika na osa tuwa rorwa. I know, I know that uh, when you asked for it, it is a, you, you, your husband said, I'm not a small boy again, and you are not a small girl. Watch and see what the anointing is going to do this time around. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen today. Hallelujah. That old 
evil way of doing things is cast out of this church. Praise the name of the Lord. In uh, Isaiah chapter number 43. Isaiah chapter number 43, we read from verse 18. Come forth, come forth and read. Come, read, yes. Read from verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Remember ye not the former things, uh -huh. neither consider the things of old. Mm -hmm. Behold, mm. I will do a new thing. Ah. Hey, hey. 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 I, 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 want, I want you to write those new things that you want God to do. Have you already written them? But if you have not written them, write them down. The new things that you want God to do in your life. Don't waste this anointing, please. Don't waste the grace that is available in the house today. Write those new things that you want God to do for you. Read. Behold, uh -huh. I will do a new thing. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Uh -huh. Shall you not know it? Uh -huh. I will even make a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And rivers in the desert. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. The beast of the field shall honor me. Jesus. Mm. The dragons and the owls. Mm. Because I give waters in the wilderness. And he's, saying, he's saying even the devil never thought that uh, this is what I am going to do. He never thought. Because he had already so abused you. So frustrated you. So discouraged you. And he thought that I have finished you. But God is saying. I will do a new thing. And they say it will spring forth. He said you will see it. You will see it. You will eat it. You will weigh it. You will drive it. You will live in it. This new thing is coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. But as long as your mind is still limited, you are still holding back on the former things. You are still holding back on your past failures. You will not see the new that God wants to do. God never take anybody to the promised land who is holding fast on the failures of Egypt. God never takes anybody to the promised land who is still holding fast on the failures of Egypt. He is prepared to have you stay by the Jordan River for, for 40 years. Yet, you can walk in your destiny in 40 days. God is ready. As long as you still have this old mentality, He is patient. He is ready to wait for you up to 40 years. By the wilderness. As long as. Your mind. Is not yet transformed. And. Aligned. With what he says. Concerning you. 
and your destiny. The promised land was a 40-day journey, but they stayed there for 40 years. And God says, as long as your mentality is still that of Egypt and not of the promised land, you are still thinking of your past. You are not giving any space for the future. You will not enter into the promised land. Hallelujah. So they stayed 40 years. They waited 40 years. And when they didn't change their mind, for 40 years, he ended up saying, you will die in the wilderness. Your carcasses will fall in the wilderness. But you will not step into your promised land. Why? Because in your mind, you are still holding your past failures. So today, I want you to say bye bye to all the failures that you ever had in your life. You failed your grade 7 or your form 4 or your form 6. That was then. There is something new that is about to come. And for that new thing to happen, you have to forget about your failures. Are you getting what I'm saying? You once were in a relationship or relationships that never amounted to marriage. And you truly want to get married. You truly want to get married. Forget about all those relationships that failed. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have been trying to get money, trying business, and for the past 10 years, there is not one that gave you enough to satisfy your heart. And you still want to be a millionaire. Forget about all the efforts that you tried and they didn't work. And get a mindset. Though I have failed last year, this year I am going to make it. Though I have failed last month, this is not last month, this is a new month. And I will not allow my past to interfere with my future, especially your negative past. Hallelujah. So this is what they didn't do. This is what Israel failed to do. They failed to let go of their failures in Egypt. Right in the wilderness, they were still talking about Egypt. Right before the promised land, they were still talking about Egypt. Some of them, ten of them, entered into the promised land together with Moses and, 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 and Caleb, or with, with, with Joshua and Caleb, but they still talked of Egypt. They said, we are not able. The promised land is there. It is good. It's flowing with milk and honey, but we are not able because there are giants there. And we saw ourselves like grasshoppers. The reason why you have a giant of a problem is because you are not a small boy. You are a giant. I said the reason why you have a giant of a problem it is because you are not a small boy. If you were a small boy, they were not going to bring giants before you. They were going to bring Small boys in a heavyweight championship, 
they don't bring lightweight to contest or to fight the heavyweight. Heavyweight versus heavyweight. So, the reason why you have got this mountain of a problem is because your life is supposed to be at the top of the mountain. And acknowledge it now. Acknowledge it now. Acknowledge it now. Acknowledge it now. If you don't acknowledge it, you'll never rise to be at the top of the mountain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have what it takes to be at the top. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. I am still preparing you. We are about to hit something here. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have what it takes to be at the top. And you will be at the top. You will be at the top. You have what it takes. I want you to say to yourself, I have what it takes to make it. I have it. I have it. I have it. I have all the money. I have all the human resources I have the opportunity and I'll fulfill my purpose in Jesus name hallelujah praise the name of the Lord say my past failures are gone the new year has come my past failures are gone the new has come. And I will make it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. I could not see